Well, I am so excited. I am here with the youth bringing me the energy. We just found out that we are neighbors. I am here <laughs> with Willa Amai. Did I say that correctly? You did. So okay. proud. <laughs> Because everyone always messes up my name. So I don't feel as terrible as I should at when most people mess up names because I'm used to people being like, is it Alessandra Torresini? And I'm like, no, it's Alessandra Torresani. So I've gotten used to everyone saying every kind of name for me. So um, I'm sure you have gotten that as well. My favorite one has been people in like written articles that have been peer reviewed. I've been called Willa Amal. So the I and my was an L, but Great. my favorite one was <laughs> Will I Am. I became Will I Am. It was a story about Will I Am, but it was a story about me. Um, so you know what? I cool. hope that it got you really popular and that I, your song went to number one or something. I would like to credit my small level of success to that article, um, <laughs> thinking that they were going to find a Will I Am song. So yeah. I am obsessed with that. Well, I am first and foremost going to give you the biggest virtual hug and congratulations to being a NAMI ambassador. Thank it you. is the most fun that you will ever, ever, ever have. Just as a quick backstory, because you're probably like, who is this like blonde chick that like talks a lot? Um, I'm an actress and I was actually diagnosed with bipolar one disorder about uh like 13 years ago. And I never told anyone for like 10 years. Um, and I had been invited to a NAMI um, event through another friend who's an ambassador. Yeah. And I met everyone and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to tell you, I live with bipolar disorder and I never speak about this. Is there something that I can do to help out because what your message is, how you are all about not being alone. I never felt any support from a mental health community before. Um, so they really, truly, I owe my life to NAMI because it was the first time that I was able to truly be um, my authentic self and, and have this real life experience. So can you just tell everyone and myself, obviously, because I don't know you yet, what is your lived experience with mental health, with uh, mental illness? What brings you to um, be this new fresh voice for NAMI? Yeah, um, so I, I think from a very young age, um, well, just to start, I have an anxiety disorder. That's my situation. Cool. Um, Welcome right. to the club. <laughs> um, so I think, you know, as a kid, you know, a really young kid, I remember um, I was very energetic and extroverted, but that came out of um, that was sort of my coping mechanism as a child for mm -hmm. being anxious about a lot of different things. Um, and so then, you know, I also, um, I started writing music at a very young age. You know, I played piano when I was four. And as soon as I started playing piano, um, I started writing music. Um, mm. And so, you know, I, I had these sort of childish, well, I, you know, I, I don't think that music is ever childish, even though I was a child, but um, <laughs> I had my sort of, you know, coping mechanisms for my like five, six, seven year old self. And then um, I was officially diagnosed, um, you know, with anxiety disorder when I was in fourth grade. And um, wow. I started uh, getting and so young, which is yeah. so unheard of, I feel like, well, maybe because you are younger and things are a little different and doctors are more aware of, of you know, somewhat signs, because that was yeah. something that was never thought about. Um, yeah. So anyways, please go on. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt, no, 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 but I'm no, like, totally oh my God, that's never. wild. <laughs> but um, I, I was, I was incredibly lucky because my mom also has an anxiety disorder um, oh, and she, but she's incredibly high functioning. I mean, she, if, if you were ever to meet her, she's the most high functioning woman period. And right. so watching her, um, you know, She's the reason I think that I got diagnosed so early, but also mm. once I knew and had a name for what I had and knew it was the same thing that she had, watching her cope so gracefully and, you know, um, with so much humanity and compassion, watching that was, you know, so inspirational to me and a huge mm. part of, you know, my 
just like my own mental health journey. But anyway, I, I was diagnosed because my mom was noticing the signs. I was having panic attacks at night because I started developing this panic attack cycle where if I stayed up past 9 p.m., I would start spiraling. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so I, I, I went to my pediatrician and um, she, you know, recommended some therapists. And um, so I, you know, started on my journey officially. Um, wow. And it's definitely had its ups and downs. I mean, I, I think that in the beginning, I struggled just because it was sort of right on the cusp of mental health in, you know, children and adolescents being, right. you know, destigmatized. And so I think a lot of my friends also struggled with similar things that I struggled with, but uh, I didn't know about it. And so mm-hmm. I, at this, you know, at, at the same time that, you know, I'm getting diagnosed and that this is all happening, you know, I, I struggled a lot socially in elementary school. And so, you know, even if I did feel like I could talk to people about it, I didn't have really friends to talk about it right. with. Right. Um, Well, and it's really lonely, right? Because you don't know, you know, first of all, being in school and being young in general is so hard and people are just mean no matter what. And everyone's going through their own stuff. So, you know, we can look at it now and, and, you know, especially my generation, looking back at people that were bullies when I was younger, I never realized maybe they were abused by their family and by their parents, you know, maybe they were born with these disorders and they had no outlet. And so they used other people as punching bags, you know, you never, Never really know. And I think that that's where it's so tricky, right? Because you don't know how to even handle your right. peers and let them know you're going through this. You know, you said that you had ways that you coped like in fourth grade and stuff. What were those ways that you coped like when you were super young and what is something that you do now? Well, the, you know, the truth is that my coping mechanism has first and foremost always been music and writing music, and that hasn't changed. And so yeah. that's part of why I'm so attached to music and part of why I've always known that it will always be a part of my life mm-hmm. is that I have found that it is the best way for me to um, come down off of that anxiety peak or, you know, keep myself from going down some sort of spiral, you know, and, yeah. and so that's what, you know, I'm so lucky to have music. So many people, you know, it takes them such a long time to find what it is that really helps them. And Mm -hmm. I I knew what it was, you know, since I was so young. And so I feel lucky for that every day. Um, But I also, you know, when I was younger, it was mostly just um, music and eating. I definitely, (laughs) um, I definitely coped a lot with food when I was younger. Um, and then now it's, um, still music and, you know, I try to exercise now. Um, I found that that really helps just with the sort of fast moving thoughts. And I, I, and I, I take a lot from my mom, you know, she's the one who taught me that, you know, it doesn't have to be some big like sweat fest, but just moving your body is incredibly helpful. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I really have even a good stretch will do truly you know? you know, yoga just and even doing this just and kind moving of a, around yeah. have a dance party at your house you don't have to right. be like super fit and, and yeah, be no the it's not about that and groomer. yeah so um, um yeah. yeah no 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 keep going keep going oh well just you know I I've just um I think that I have always sort of mirrored my mom in Mm -hmm. um the sense that I because I I watched I was able to understand what I was feeling at such a young age like I had a name for it at such a young age you could identify right I I now still at a young age um but later can now you know it's instinctual for me to go you know write something down go write a song go stretch somewhere like I, I have the luxury of it being instinctual for me to find my coping mechanism, find the thing that makes me happy and do it. Um, right. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that that's so amazing. You know, is there anything that happens like in your life? Like I know for me, when it comes to my acting, that is when I'm the happiest. I'm sure it's like you with your music. I, 
feel like my bipolar disorder just like kind of disappears or goes on the wayside when I'm, I'm on set. Um, how is it for you with music? Like, do you find like in your world in general, for me, whenever I feel rejection or through social media or all sorts of things like that, that's when I feel like I'm greatly affected. Is there something that really kind of sparks the anxiety that you try to um, refrain yourself from or just kind of be like, okay, I know that this is going to maybe in quote unquote trigger me. So I'm not going to do A, B, and C. Um, well, I think I, I'm, you know, very proud to say that the, the thing that I really struggled with, um, when I was younger, which is sleep, I, I no longer struggle with that as much. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think that I've realized now that sleep, like my, my real, I really had a phobia of being awake at night. Um, yeah. and I think that I've realized now that I'm older, that that was really just a symptom of, you know, the crux of where my anxiety comes from, which is just, you know, I think it comes from a fear of inadequacy. Mm -hmm. um, and so in my brain, even though I couldn't make the connection consciously in my brain, it was like, you know, if I don't go to sleep, then when I have to go to school tomorrow, I won't perform as well. And mm -hmm. school is the only thing you're good at, which I don't think that's true, but that's what I would tell myself. And, and so basically this idea that if I didn't go to sleep, anything I have to do tomorrow, I, I won't do as well as I'm supposed to do. And so now, you know, I think nowadays it's more just things now that I know that that's really the core of what I get anxious about. Mm -hmm. um, it's easier for me to recognize things that will make me anxious. Um, but at the same time, you know, I, I also like to acknowledge that I've you know, I'm still in school and I'm in the college application process and everything like that. Ooh, and the girl. truth is that I, <laughs> I, I wouldn't be doing so well in school if I wasn't afraid of failing. Now that's right. not to say I don't, I would never condone, you know, the sort of unhealthy approach to that, that I took when I was younger, but I do like to acknowledge that you know, because I am proud of myself in the ways that I feel that I've taken my anxiety and turned it into something that's positive, mm -hmm. you know, reap the benefits of my anxiety without paying the price as, you know, hard as I did when I was younger. Right. So now it and is it's like a superhero. It's like you're a superhero and you have a I superpower. Mean, I <laughs> That's what I say, because you know what? It makes you who you are. It's why your art is so amazing. And I think that it is so bananas to me because I look at you and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't even imagine what it would be like to be, you're 17, right? Yeah. To be 17 and be able to not only identify the mental health, you know, um, I won't even say problem, but what the situation and the issue is that you were born with, but being able to take that, turn it upside down and make it this beautiful piece of art and who you are in your heart and to help other people. Yeah. I mean, I, cause I think I, I, another part of the sort of fear of inadequacy thing, I, a, another symptom of, of that is that I, really have a hard time dealing with not understanding something mm -hmm. and so because of that I did everything that I could to understand my anxiety you know both creatively and academically you know I am incredibly I think I'm going to major in English in college but I I'm also incredibly interested in genetics and biotechnology and you know um the way that our bodies work and um so you know I, I've been able to dive deep into what anxiety means on a genuinely, you know, sort of molecular level. And then right. I have explored my anxiety creatively in my own music. And so I think that that's part of why I am so passionate and excited about talking about mm -hmm. my anxiety with other people, because I had the luxury to go to school where I could take a class about genetics and biotechnology and do research on my laptop that I have about what anxiety is on, a, you know, on in your DNA. And 
and I have the luxury of having always had a piano and having to have music lessons. And so I've always had the resources at my disposal to understand what it is that my situation is. And that's what's helped me the most over my journey. And I feel like there are so many people who just don't have those resources. Mm -hmm. And so I would like to be that resource for people to help them understand, you know, who they are and what their mental health situation may be and, you know, why it's okay to not be okay. Right. Um, so, I, okay. And have you found since you, you know, are being so open about it and now that you're, you know, an ambassador and this is something that, you know, obviously you feel comfortable enough speaking about it, that you're doing videos like this. Cause I mean, it takes, it's really bravery to come out and speak this and be aware of, not necessarily the pressure, but the weight behind it, right? You're going to have people that may criticize you and say, oh, I don't know if that's true. You know, is Willa just trying to become popular because mental health is like a popular hashtag now? You know, it's it's trendy. Um, so it's a lot of weight to have people now be listening to you and judging on the brain. Right. Um, but have you had friends, um, or people really close in your circle that have approached you that said, Hey, I had no idea that you were going through this. I may be in a similar boat. What do you do to who help you, you know, keep straight in line? Like, is there any advice that you would give to your friends or just in general to the, the public that's listening, um, in general about the anxiety? Well, I think, I think more what sort of happened to me as I came into high school and started doing more and more stuff that kind of amplified my voice and my message. I think that I, it was more not my friends realizing that they had a mental health issue and that they mm -hmm. want to talk to me about it and more that they were, they knew the whole time and it was more people were talking about it with me. Um, right. And so I think that the biggest piece of advice that I always sort of gave to people was that, you know, barring the unhealthy and unsafe, your coping mechanism, you know, like what makes you feel good is what makes you feel good. And it doesn't matter if you're like the biggest thing that I tell people a lot is that it doesn't matter if you're bad at it. Like when I, <laughs> when I first started, when I first started using, you know, like walking as a way to help with my anxiety, um, I was I have asthma and so um I was I'd never exercised before I never placed played mm. sports or anything and so I was really just out of shape and I struggled to even you know walk for prolonged periods of time and so it was really hard on me at first um especially considering my anxiety is because I feared being inadequate to feel bad at walking um but as I you know, got better at it, it became one of the best ways for me to release anxiety um, if I wasn't feeling particularly creative or something like mm. that. Um, and so pushing myself to get better when I started out not good was, you know, provided me with a coping mechanism that has really helped me. And so, you know, for people who feel like, you know, painting or, ceramics mm. or whatever you know whatever you don't is. have to be an artist you don't no. have to be van gogh just no. just like scribble right like i don't care if you take 45 minutes to just make like a lump of clay and you like you know put a little cow on it and like call it a day like it doesn't matter you know you don't have to be good right. at it nobody ever has to see it it's just about you it's about you and you doing what you need to do to feel better um yeah so I think that that's the best advice that I, that I have based on like my own experience. The more that you go, I mean, I don't know. I mean, tours, I feel like don't exist right now in the world. So yeah. that's obviously not a thing, but the more that you have been in the in quote unquote music business, right. And that you maybe perform stuff like that. Do you find that your anxiety ever gets, um, heightened and more exacerbated because of, you know, all of the pressure around you and people and producers and kind of management, like kind of all pushing you because 
sometimes I know I feel that way when there's a lot of heat and there's a lot of people and a lot of pressure, I will snap in, in very random situations. And usually with people that, that know me and love me the most, never in a work environment, but mm -hmm. that, that buildup, I feel like it'd be yeah. a lot. Do you feel that? Or has it been okay for you right now? Probably, especially because we're all have been in quarantine. So it's not like you're traveling around the world, right? <laughs> no one is. <laughs> I mean, with performing and writing the music and recording the music, I mean, that stuff has never really been anxiety provoking to me just because it's what helps me understand my anxiety. It's what helps me cope. Mm -hmm. So, and the same, honestly, with school, like, you know, I, I am under a lot of pressure at school. I go to a really rigorous school with a lot of high expectations. And, and so those things have never really provoked my anxiety just in that even though they do demand a lot of me they're what I'm good at and mm -hmm. it brings me joy to do them um the things that can sometimes kind of do that for me is you know marketing in terms of, like in terms of music marketing the the publicity stuff stuff like that mm -hmm. just because it it's never been my area of expertise i didn't know anything about it until i was thrown into it and it's not time. fun for you no it's not it's, it's, it's not, not what it's you not, were supposed to right, do <laughs> it's not the reason why i'm doing music at all and especially with social media you know i i did grow up i i grew up with social media and so i feel like i'm I'm attuned to it the way any other 17 year old would be. And so it's hard for me sometimes. It's three o'clock. I'm sorry, my computer announced. Oh my God, that was so funny. I was like, wait, who's speaking? My computer announced the hour on the hour. So sorry. Um, That's so cute. <laughs> so, um, oh God, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, social media. Sometimes it's hard for me to promote myself on social media because it mm -hmm. feels so wrong because I grew up using social media as a tool to solely communicate with friends and talk about what's going on in my life and so having any motives to be on social media other than those felt weird to me and mm -hmm. still sometimes feel weird to me honestly and so that stuff can provoke my anxiety but I think the good thing is that everyone in my life knows that and everyone mm -hmm. you know in my family my friends and on my team everyone knows and so everyone does their very best to help me with that and you know do what they can to alleviate that stress so I definitely have some incredible people around me to help but if I know that if I didn't that I'd definitely be in a different place the people in now see, I know nothing about the music business so you have to okay give me give me a moment the old lady doesn't know um but do the people around you not including your family just from a business standpoint because mental health is um, something that is spoken about a lot, and especially with musicians, right? With Miley Cyrus, Demi Lovato speaking about how she lives with bipolar disorder, Selena Gomez living with bipolar disorder. It feels like everyone, you know, and, and Ariana Grande is always talking about um, her anxiety and panic attacks. Are, are the people who are surrounding you that are in the business, are they more cautious and aware of how sensitive minds are and how sensitive emotions are? Or um, are they kind of suppressing it and saying, oh, don't really speak about, about this, really, um, something that you should get into? Have, have you ever had those kind of conversations or felt a certain way um, with the people around you on, on how they deal with your mental health? Well, I think because I've been lucky enough to have worked starting at a very young age with incredibly compassionate people, I think they always see me at least sometimes as the 12 year old that I was when I first met them, especially mm -hmm. Linda Perry, who's my producer and mentor. And so she will always protect me and care for me as if I was her 12 year old daughter. And so gotcha. that means, you know, when mental Which health- Which is great. I would love right. Linda Perry to treat me like I was 12. <laughs> right, like, you know, when, when I have spikes of anxiety, when I have moments where I need, you know, a little bit of extra help, she understands, um, she understands that in a really important 
way. So, but that's not to say, you know, not because anyone around me, you know, business-wise told me not to, but it it's definitely was scary when I first started talking about, because it was early on, you know, of course. It, it, I wasn't kind of holding it back once I started my music career for like a long time, but, you know, it was still despite, you know, encouragement from everyone scary just because I, I didn't want to be critiqued on my the mental health situation that I have that I can't control Mm -hmm. um and I think that's such a testament to the people who come out and speak about it despite people around them you know discouraging that and I think that it's always you know I've always respected so much people who speak out about and not just mental health you know people in situations where they you know with their gender with their sexual orientation Mm -hmm. things like that where the people around them who they care about the most they know they won't you know, accept it Mm -hmm. to then come out and talk about it. It may, it's, it's so inspiring to see because I know that everyone around me was so loving and accepting of it. And even I had trouble coming out and talking about it for the first time. So, you know, it's interesting. I love that you brought up other, you know, situations like, uh, you know, um, my best friends are part of LGBTQIA plus like I am in that community. I have a lot of friends that um, lived with severe eating disorders that put them in hospitals, you know, and, and coming out and sharing a story. I think that people don't realize the importance of a story. I I even do um, on on my podcast and on um, another app, I, I host these rooms And it's just simply called mental health story time. And it's like being kids again. And we all go back to like being in that circle and having that conversation. And you could share a story about you growing up. You could share a story about something that happened to you. And just by people using their words and using it in a way where they're just sharing and just letting things off their chest, you find so many things that you relate to. And you're like, oh my God, I wow, I never thought about this memory, but what you're just saying made me remember this and how beautiful it was or how hard it was. So I think that there is nothing more important than than just sharing your story. And I think what you're doing is so amazing. I'm going to ask you one final question. Um, What does it mean to not be alone to you? Like in the general statement of like, we are not alone, you are not alone. What, What does that mean to you? I think that the the phrase in general just reminds me of the people who I've had around me my whole life. I I think that the reason that I've had so much success in, you know, my like health um, mm-hmm. and the reason that I've come so far is yes, my coping mechanisms are incredibly important and have been instrumental in that healing process. But I wouldn't have had the courage or the incentive to even find those coping mechanisms had it not been for my family and my friends. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, my family was always first. I, I didn't really have a ton of friends when I was younger. And so my parents, and especially my sister, she will always be my best friend and she has always been there for me. Um, And then, you know, now I'm older and I do have some more friends and, and that feels so special. And so I think that the statement both reminds me of those people and how much I love those people and how lucky I feel that they love me. Um, But it also reminds me that, you know, like I was saying earlier, not everyone has those people. So actually very Mm -hmm. few people have the privileged support network that I know that I have. And so we are not alone to me is um, for those people. I mean, it's for everyone, but I think that it, um, it's like, I, I really want to give that message to those people because they deserve it just as much as, you know, anyone else. I feel the same way if I didn't have my family um, and my chosen family. And if I didn't have my mom, my mom seems very similar to your mom 
where she did everything she could to identify the problem and see how she could help me thrive and live the best version of myself that I possibly could be. Um, mm -hmm. And so hats off to your mom. Um, this has been so amazing, Willa. And I need to have you on my podcast because you're yes, like I the best, want. you're the best guest ever. Um, thank so you. thank you so much and welcome to the NAMI family. And thank I hopefully will meet you in person soon.